So this equipment is used to find g by freefall. A number of ways of doing this. This is my kind of personal favourite. We've just got a lab power supply here. It's set on 4 volts DC. Uh, and that's actually connected in, in to, a, um, to a timing unit. Do you see this timing unit here? And this timing unit is connected to this ball release mechanism. Essentially, it's got metal arms here. If I come around the side, you will see. The metal arms don't touch. When you put a ball bearing into the metal arms like this, then uh, I just need two hands to do that. Just give me a second. It makes the connection and makes the circuits. And what the timer can do there is it can detect when you push this uh, plunger firmly in, it can detect when that circuit is broken, it starts the timer. The ball then falls straight down and hits a pressure sensor down there, which we need to make sure is okay. So the pressure sensor, look here, has got the wires in there and it, you press it. And then to reset it, you do that to move it back up. Um, so the timer is started when the ball comes out of the jaws and the timer stops when it hits there. Now to get that connection correctly, you have to get the wiring correctly on the, on the timer. And so you can see we have a start and stop. Now the start obviously needs to be connected to the, um, to the top there, to the, to, to the ball release. Now the stop doesn't. The other side of the, the ball release gets connected to the same connection as one of the power connections. This is connected to the zero volts one. And that's also commonly shared with a very long wire here to one of the connections on the, uh, on the, on the switch at the bottom. And then similarly stop then, in the same way, one of the connections on stop here is connected to the, to the release at the bottom, and then it's obviously in the common one there. And to make it work, you have to um, switch it on, you press reset. I'm not sure I can get all this in shots, but if I go three, two, one, release the ball, you'll see it fall and see the timer. Three, two, one, four. And there we go, that fall was 1.5, and we've got the scale set on, on milliseconds there. Now this is really quick to repeat, really quick to get good results. And the light gates method still works, there's a bit more fiddly to set up. What we can also see here is to get a vertical. We've got this thing here, it's not a pendulum, it's actually a, a plumb line. So that when it goes down we know that our, um, we've got a vertical, a vertical line. Um, and that's a useful practical technique in a number of different areas for making sure you've got a vertical. So that's G by 3, 4. Uh, very common experiments and useful experiments to be able to do with students.